Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this overview, I'm going to show you how to create these stunning transitions with Continuum 2020 inside of Vegas Pro. Okay, so here we are in Vegas Pro, and really what I want to do is help familiarize you with some of the new transition effects available in Continuum 2020. With the most recent update, I now have access to five new transitions. Curl Dissolve, RGB Displacement Dissolve, RGB Blur Dissolve, Prism Dissolve, Colorize Glow Dissolve, and Collide Dissolve. Each of these will help you create stunning transitions quickly and easily. Now to begin with, let's take a look at how Continuum Transitions work in Vegas Pro. I have two clips here next to each other in my timeline, and I want to go to my Transitions tab and select RGB Blur Dissolve. Now I'm going to drag that right onto the spot between my clips. Now I haven't adjusted the length of the transition in Vegas, so that sweet spot may be a bit difficult to find but by dragging it between the clips, I can automatically create a one second transition, which you can see here if I scrub through. Now I wanted to show you this first because when I bring up the effect palette, I want to draw attention to the animation style dropdown. There are two options available to you here, auto and percent done. Now auto will automatically animate the transition across the full duration, in this case, one second while switching to percent done will allow me to manually animate the transition by setting keyframes. So I could start the transition at zero and quickly ramp it up, or I could give it a slower lead in to the next clip. It allows me to exert more control and fine tune the effect any way I want. But if I want to stick with the auto animation, I'm not bound to the default length of one second. Auto animate will generate the transition based on the length of the transition in the timeline. So I can always adjust that length by grabbing either of my clips and adjusting them like so. This will allow me to make quick adjustments to the overall duration. But if I want even more control over the look and feel of the animation, what I want to do is open up the animation tuning parameter group. And this section allows me to fine tune the animation in, out, as well as the duration. By enabling the view ease curve, Vegas will overlay a graph that allows me to see the animation curves, as well as my duration. When I adjust the ease in, mid, and out parameters, you can see that my graph updates to reflect these changes. I can see here, for example, that by lowering the ease in, I can create a slow transition in and a quick transition out. By adjusting the mid, I can extend the number of frames that the effect remains in transition, or by adjusting the duration, I can change how slow or quickly one clip dissolves into another. The ease curve graph is a great way to visualize your effect without having to continually scrub through or render to get it just right. It's available in all the Continuum Transition filters, but just remember to disable the graph view before you render. Another feature that's available in Continuum Transitions can be found in the Region Animation group. Normally, when you apply a transition, the effect just dissolves between the incoming and outgoing. But with region animation, I can set up wipe-like transition effects, allowing me to toggle between circle and line wipes, animate the effect in, out, or both. By adjusting the softness and angle of the transition effect, I can create some unique and stunning effects with very little work. Along with the ease curves and animation regions, all transition filters contain the built-in FX browser, containing a selection of professionally designed presets. Simply launching the FX browser will allow you to preview existing presets in the browser itself. Once satisfied, I can hit apply and the effect updates immediately with my chosen preset. I can then make any modifications necessary to customize it. I'm not bound by the original preset and I can use it as a basis to customize it for precise animations and professional results. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at customizing various transitions. Here, I've selected a preset for BCC Curl Dissolve, a transition effect based on the new BCC Curl effect. It simulates curl distortions that will automatically animate throughout the transition. In addition to numerous cool effects, this transition can be used to simulate heat haze. By adjusting the complexity, I can increase or decrease the number of curls present at any one time, while distortion amplitude will allow me to tighten the curl effect. Curl size will naturally allow me to increase the overall size of the individual curls. If I decrease the amplitude while increasing the curl size, I can create a very cool watery effect. By default, the direction of the curl animation is upwards, but if I decrease my direction to around negative 180, I can cause the curls to drift downward, creating a look like water flowing down glass. Now if I want, 
I can decrease the speed a bit to slow down the curl animation. Now it's important to note that this is not going to affect the speed of my transition. That's still controlled by either my transition length or my percent done keyframes. Rather, curl speed only affects the speed at which the curls themselves auto animate. Now the final option that's available is the apply to drop down menu. This option, which is also available in each of the new filters, allows me to select where I want the curl animation to be applied. By default, it's set to dissolve, meaning that the curl will animate over the transition dissolve. However, I do have the option of setting the curl to animate over the original source and the reveal layers, or to turn it off completely, which will simply cause the effect to crossfade based on how we set up our animation tuning. With RGB Displacement Dissolve and RGB Blur Dissolve, Continuum 2020 offers two transitions that allow for direct manipulation of the footage's red, green, and blue channels. Here, I've applied RGB Displacement Dissolve to my clips. As before, I've set my animation to auto, and both my region animation and tuning are set to their default settings. Now, unlike with Curl, we have three groups available to us here. RGB Misalignment, Displacement Map, and displacement. In the RGB misalignment group, I can use the pickers to shift the positions of the red, green, and blue channels, along with adjusting the intensity and opacity of each channel. This allows me to not only push the various channels out of alignment, but also to increase or decrease the intensity and opacity of each channel. I can also select the apply mix for various color channels. From the drop-down, I can select any of the primary overlay mixes to create a wide array of looks. Now one important parameter to pay attention to is the reflect edges. Typically this will be enabled by default. Now the reason for this is that as we push the various color channels out of alignment, there may be areas along the edges that no longer have the correct channel pixels, which will create this distorted edge. By enabling reflect edges, the filter will reflect the edge pixels, preventing this edge from showing up. Displacement Map controls the distortion of the incoming clip as it transitions through the source clip. By adjusting the pre-blur, threshold, gamma, and black and white levels, I can adjust how much of each region of the incoming clip is used to create the distortion, how much of a displacement and along which channels can be controlled through the displacement subgroup. For example, increasing the master displacement will create more intense distortions throughout the transition. By making small changes to the misalignment and displacement, I can quickly and easily create unique transitions. Another feature of Continuum 2020 transitions comes with the filter RGB Blur Dissolve. Much like RGB Displacement, RGB Blur gives me control over the red, green, and blue channels. But rather than displacing and distorting those channels, RGB Blur allows me to blur those color channels individually. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have two clips, and I've applied RGB Blur Dissolve between them. As before, I have access to my region and animation tuning, but I also have access to each individual color channel and parameters to blur them either individually or as a whole. By adjusting the red, green, and blue blur parameters, I can adjust their individual blurs along the X and Y axis, creating colored streaks as my transition animates. I can also adjust the overall blur throughout the transition by adjusting the master blur. Now with Prism Dissolve, I have the ability to simulate chromatic aberration throughout my transition. Now while at its default, it initially appears to be similar to RGB blur and displacement, what's happening here is not affecting the individual color channels. Rather, the aberration is set by assigning colors to the short, mid, and long color parameters. The sample counts will control how many iterations of this color aberration appears. So for example, higher values will create a smoother effect, while lower values will create something closer to what we saw with misalignment. And as you can see, if I bring it all the way to the bottom, I have a single array of those color samples. Let's set that back to default. And you can see that I have these on-screen widgets. I can use them to adjust the start and end points of my prism distortion. They correspond to the pickers located here. Additionally, by adjusting the depth delta, I can create a more dramatic effect. A delta of 0 will center the prism effect, while a value of plus or minus 10 will push or pull the effect respectively. Now lastly here, I have rotation controls, and those are going to allow me to spin the effect to create a funnel-like transition. 
And remember, while the individual effect parameters may differ from one transition to the next, each of the filters are going to allow me to control the overall animation and curves that we saw earlier. So, for example, if I reset my effect to default and come down to my region animation, I can set the type to out and the region to circle. When I play that back, my transition is going to iris towards the camera like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, one final transition that I want to take a look at is BC Collida Dissolve. Collida Dissolve creates a kaleidoscopic effect that animates in intensity as the transition progresses. In essence, it's creating a kaleidoscope warping effect that breaks the image up into tiled patterns. Now there are three different types of animation available to me. Undistort will create a typical kaleidoscope effect that builds throughout the transition. Mix with Original will animate the distortion on top of the original footage. And Undistort and Mix will combine both of the previous options to create a really interesting bleeding effect. I can tell the plugin how to display the effect output by selecting an option from the output menu. By default, this is going to be set to Tile Mix, which will mix the individual distortions from Tile 1 and Tile 2. Now, if I want to view the individual tiles or manually set their shape, I can select a tile over source or output. These options are going to provide a way for me to see the part of the source image that's being used for tile 1 or tile 2. The red outline is going to show me the shape of that selected tile. Now if tile mix has been enabled in the output menu, I have access to a number of parameter groups that allow me to customize the look of the kaleidoscope pattern. I can adjust the center point, tile size, and even the style. There are a number of options that I can choose from, including manual options such as variable star. When this is selected in the style menu, a new parameter becomes active, star count. This will allow me to adjust the number of points in my star. Now the interesting thing here worth noting is that the star count is always twice the number of points on a star. What this means is that if I set the star count of value to 10, I'm going to get a 5-pointed star. Feel free to experiment and choose different options to create unique and interesting effects. Now, the important thing to remember is that each of these transitions new to Continuum 2020 is going to offer you those unique looks and nearly unlimited customization. And as I've said before, always experiment with each to create the looks and styles that work for you. But in terms of this general overview, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.